out of respect for the service today. We are celebrating her life. We also mourn and grieve her loss. And so we begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to place our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our sister Ruth, that she may share in Christ's victory and be consoled by his love. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen, fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Ruth, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A couple of readings um, that I've selected for our service today. The first is the 23rd Psalm, and if you know the 23rd Psalm and you want to say it along with me, I invite you to do that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Second reading is, is a poem. It's uh, titled Footprints in the Sand. One night I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. <coughs> After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest, the most troublesome times in my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord whispered, my Precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never, ever, during your trials and testing, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Before I read the gospel lesson, I do want to just open it up if somebody wants to share a story about Ruth or a memory, uh, something uh, that just made Ruth Ruth. I'm going to step away and recognizing that one, nobody likes to talk in front of a crowd because we're, people are afraid of that, and this is a funeral, uh, so we add the emotion to it, but I'll just step away if somebody wants to share a story. Again, we know that it doesn't mean that there are stories to share, and there will be time, of course. That's how people live on in our lives, is we share the story with the children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. So. Well, the last reading comes from the Gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. 
you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. So we've gathered in this room to celebrate, to lift up the life of Ruth Giesen. But we also mourn as well. Thank you for being here. You've performed the ministry of presence. In this time of experiencing a loss, this is when we gather as family, we gather as friends, we gather as neighbors. You know, God comes to us and each of the people who come to express their condolences, to sit and listen to your words of grief and sadness. So you performed a ministry of presence, so thank you. And we gathered in this room for one purpose. Now you, you might think, well, a room is a room is a room. As a pastor, I have found that rooms that people find themselves in throughout their lives are very personal and very important. I was talking to a gentleman yesterday, and I learned about a woman who's, who just got discharged from Hershey Medical Center. She had been in for COVID-related recovery. But the last two days of her stay at Hershey Medical Center, she was placed in a room closet that had been converted into a hospital room. And she had a roommate with her as well. So she was placed in a place that had no windows, no bathroom facility, just an isolation room for her recovery. So the places we find ourselves in are not always what we want them to be. And our residents, our residences we find ourselves in are maybe not always as bad as we might think. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's teaching his disciples. And so he uses a metaphor that he hopes that they will understand something about the kingdom of God. And this is really interesting to me as a pastor, especially when we learn that Jesus is trying to give some peace to his disciples before his own death that's looming very near the future. He's trying to give his disciples some peace. And we hope we might find some words of peace in Jesus' words this morning. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. That's always difficult for us because often our hearts are troubled. And then he says, believe in God, believe in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. You know, your hearts are troubled today because you've lost a loved one. A mother, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, maybe a friend. But Jesus is going somewhere with this metaphor. And I say it's a metaphor or a simile that Jesus is using for his disciples to give them an image that they can understand something about the kingdom of God. You know, we might say to someone, you know, it's raining like cats and dogs outside. And we know that it's not actually raining cats and dogs, right? But we understand what it means. In the same manner, Jesus says, in my Father's house are many rooms. But Jesus is trying to remind us of his disciples, the words that give us comfort today, is that there's a place for each one of us in God's kingdom. There's a place for me, there's a place for you. There is such expansiveness that it should bring us comfort. Because we know that there are certain rooms in our own lives that bring us my wife and I like to watch a show called Homestead Rescue. Maybe you're familiar with that. These homesteads that people have where they have no water and they have no way to feed themselves and they're trying to eke out a living in the wilderness in the middle of nowhere and this family, the Rainies, come and they help them fix things up. Now oftentimes the places that they go to are places I would never want to live. I would never want to try to eke out some kind of existence. And yet these families will do anything to stay in those homesteads. They do anything because 
it, it is what they have. It's a home that is filled with rooms and filled with blood and sweat and tears. Those rooms have been transformed to fit death. Now hold that image in your mind. For this is what Jesus is doing for each one. He's transforming our space in God's kingdom that will be a perfect fit for each one of us. Each one of us have shared, you know, each one of us has our share of house stories and room stories and apartments that leaked and homes that were cold and uh, noisy neighbors that lived next by and, you know, maybe rooms that were just piled high with junk. As such, hearing this image that Jesus is preparing a room for us is something that we can understand. You have to wonder, what is your favorite room? Maybe it's a man cave. Maybe it's the kitchen. My family's favorite room was always the kitchen. That's where everybody gathered for a family gathering. But no matter what it might be, Jesus is preparing a place. And he's prepared a place for Ruth as well. She was born on April 9th, 1931. She passed away on January 9th, 2022, at the age of 90. That's a really good run in this life, 90 years of age. She's gone from this earth, but she's not gone from your, mem your memory. She lived a good life. Maybe the last few years weren't so good for her. They were a struggle. You know, Ruth loved the Lord. I love the cross that she's wearing. She's being buried with her Bible. Right? Her, her, her daughter Barb told me one of her favorite hymns was just a closer walk with thee. I just want to read the first verse. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep thee from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, Lord. Let it be. It's one of my favorite hymns. Because it speaks of the comfort we find in a relationship with Jesus Christ. I asked Barb what she remembered most about Ruth. She shared some thoughts with me. She said Ruth lived a modest life. She said Ruth liked to go yard sailing. She enjoyed the Christmas time looking at Christmas lights during the holidays. She enjoyed playing bingo. She enjoyed doing crossword puzzles. In a working life, Ruth worked for Hershey Chocolate Factory. What did she do for Hershey? She was um, on the assembly line. Assembly line, okay. But she also worked for the Harvey Gladstone Lollipop Factory. I'm finally glad to have finally known someone who worked. I hear about this Lollipop Factory that was on 2nd Street, I believe, yeah. in Hummelstown. I'm glad to know finally somebody who used to work there. Yeah. Ruth was a blessing to her family. And she lived a good, long life. I, I was amazed at how long ago her husband died, 1977. 45 years it's been since her husband died. And I said, the last few years weren't so good. She had the stroke, she had the kidney disease, she had the heart failure. Finally, she got COVID and she tried to recover from that. It's harder the older we get, when we get these diseases, it's harder to recover. But God blesses us with so many people, some that, like Ruth, seem to live forever, and some, like her husband, Edgar, who died much too soon, though he was 77, I learned, when he passed. But the reality of life is this. We come from God, we live our lives, and then we all return to God in time. So to honor Ruth's memory, we're called to live our lives in the manner that Jesus asks us to live. To love people unconditionally. To forgive limitlessly. Because Jesus was the embodiment of both forgiveness and love. As we listen to Jesus' words today, we understand that because Jesus loves each one of us, he's preparing that place for us. Just like the parents have a nursery set up for the expected child, Jesus is preparing a place when our time comes. And Jesus 
says it will be a room of completeness. It is a place that not only where we will be, but he will be also. And that's a promise. It's a promise we can hang our hats on. A promise we can live into. It's a promise that we should live into by being present with one another and sharing our love with one another. You know, it's in scripture that we find words of promise, we find words of lament, we find words of anger, we find words of hope. It's in scripture that we are reminded that God promises the opportunity for life everlasting. Life with God through Jesus who is our, our Redeemer. But God does not say that faith guarantees us a life that will be without its setbacks, a life that will be without pain or without torment or without loss. But the scriptures also provide us words of prayer and lament and praise and thanksgiving for all the emotions that we encounter in this life. I think of that 23rd Psalm. I think about how the psalmist talks about God being there with us through all the good and the bad times. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Notice he says, though I walk through the valley. Not that God puts me there to keep me there. I want to finish by reading a poem. It's a poem entitled Safely home. I am in heaven, dear ones, oh so happy and so bright. There is perfect joy and beauty in this everlasting light. All the pain and grief is over, every restless tossing past. I am now at peace forever, safely home in heaven at last. There is work still waiting for you, so you must not idly stand. Do it now while life remains. You shall rest in Jesus. When that work is all completed, he will gently call you home. Oh, the rapture of that meeting, oh, the joy to see you come. None of us know what we are going to see when our eyes close in death. Paul says that it's like looking in a mirror dimly. But as that poem reminds us, there is joy in heaven when we finally make it home. And we will see our loved ones who have passed on. And finally, every life matters to God. God loves every life because God gave us Jesus who is coming to dwell with all of us forever. Jesus says, those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. So yes, we are going to encounter valleys and hills in this life. But Jesus is there to lift us up through the valleys and to carry us over the hills. And that's a promise of God that we will see our loved ones again. We don't know how God works that out, but we have a promise that eternal life will be filled with light and presence. Not only the presence of God, the presence of Jesus, but the presence of our loved ones who have passed. So as we leave today, let us remember that love is the key. Jesus loves us. He loved Ruth in this life. He loves all people. He calls us. He actually commands us to love others with the same love that Jesus has for us. So with that ringing in our ears, we should look to live into that love each and every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. We join me in prayer. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead, and so with confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. We pray for our deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray for those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they will see God face to face. We pray for this family and the friends of our sister Ruth, that they may be consoled in their grief, by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray for all of us assembled here, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister, cleanse her of, our, of her sins, grant her the fullness of redemption. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, my friends, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our faith. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Ruth in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant. Help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. And so in peace, let us take our sister to her land.